G'day everybody. Big video planned, but a big topic. This is going to blow your mind. This is blowing my mind. I thought it would be fun to make the suggestion that the Giza complex is something very old. Possibly a nuclear reactor. Just as a thought exercise. I just want to point out, I don't believe it. I've got my own ideas. This is a, a triple, a trinity, Stone Age trinity. They worship the trinity. This is that's obvious. But there is something going on, and I'm going to make this plausible. It's going to fit all the rules of what we know about archaeology, what we know about Giza. There's going to be nothing out of left field. Everything is going to be what humans are capable of, and I'm suggesting yes. This is a reactor complex, and you know let's 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 see let's see let's see if it is. Now there is a man, Christopher Dunn. He wrote this book, the Giza Power Plant, and basically, it's a great book. I don't believe it. He's saying the the Great Pyramid is some sort of resonator. It's collecting Earth frequencies at at the at uh, coming out of the Earth. And then uh, it's it's channeling the microwave radiation, uh, and it's got um, it's basically using acids and, and stuff to do this. I don't believe that. I think the process is too tenuous. I think Chris, it's a it's a fantastic idea, but it's so tenuous. You know, build it first, show me it works, and then let's apply it to this. In the meantime, why not say that this thing that he says is a power plant is in fact a nuclear power plant because it is it is much better built as a nuclear reactor, as a fission water-cooled reactor for many different reasons. Now, firstly, carbon dates. If you look into the carbon dates of this thing, all the carbon dates have actually been taken only from here, the casing stones, and they go back to Khufu's period. This was done in the 60s, 80s, and 90s. And funnily enough, as you go up the pyramid, the dates get older, which is a bit bizarre. And as you go into these pyramids, other pyramids, the dates do get older, up to a thousand years older. I've shown that in another video. I think it was called Pyramids Reworked for 10,000 Years. And people, people didn't build this all at once in one generation. It's multi-generational, and it's changed, enhanced, like a cathedral. Look at Cologne Cathedral, 800 years in the making. You don't build this all at once, one king. That's wrong. The archaeologists are wrong. Okay. What is a nuclear plant? This is a pressurized water reactor. And essentially how it works is enriched fuel rods. It's put under pressure, same as if you boil it. And then that is hooked up to water. This is water as well. This is another water chamber, a steam generator. Turns a turbine makes electricity and this is channeled to the city by wires. Here we have this is is uh, water which is also hooked up to a condenser turn it back into water, turn the steam into water and that is hooked up to a cooling tower which drives that and that's basically how it works and I'm gonna suggest all the elements here fit geyser. Uh, instead of pressure, you can make a boiling water reactor like Chernobyl, I think was. Walls made of concrete and steel, three to five feet thick. Now, there's been so much discussion, some of it from me, about geopolymer, that this could all be concrete. This would explain why the pyramids are so huge, but also so precise. They are scientific engineered structures for a purpose. Here we have the interior of the Giza Pyramid and what I want to suggest is one of these is the reaction chamber and these are all spaced out away from each other, especially the underground chamber, because of radiation risk. The whole thing is built as it is, as a containment. This is a containment vessel for nuclear reactions, nuclear fission reactions. Later people, Egyptians came along, they saw this, they thought, isn't that wonderful? and they they hijacked it, they did what they wanted to it. But this could be way older. Now they say Egyptian history begins 3100, nothing before that, no dynasties. Wrong. I've proven that in the other videos. It, it's, it's, it's proven beyond a doubt, you know. Uh, that was a dark ages. They say the same thing about the Inca. They say they say Peru civilization started in 1200 BC, but they don't mention 1200 BC was a dark ages. It was an interruption. 
it was not a beginning. The beginning was long before. Humans didn't just appear in 1200 BC. They didn't just appear in Egypt, you know, in 3100 BC and we had no smart people before that. Believe me. One of these is the reaction vessel. I think this here, this, they say this has no practical purpose. The so-called, these so, uh, alleviate pressure, these stones. I think that looks a lot like a cooling device that is a heat sink and in fact that was cracked Christopher Dunn writes about that in his book that was repaired by technicians the King's Chamber itself precise very hard granite they wanted something very smooth the King's Chamber it's, it's black so it would absorb energy and one of these would be the reaction chamber another one would be the chamber for the water this here is an elevator shaft that was proven in a book by Houdin. I think he said this was used for building the pyramid. It lifted stones upwards. That's the Grand Gallery. Down here, that might have been for storing spent nuclear fuel. Here we have a steam... This could be possibly a condenser for a steam cycle. So, I'm not sure exactly how it would work. It is a bit complicated, and I am just starting to look at this idea but you can have steam rising and then condensing again here and this would also explain some of the shafts which we'll get to the shafts okay the shafts from the king's chamber go to the surface from the queen's chamber they do not go to the surface so I'm thinking they would not want radioactive dust radioactive steam em uh, flooding Egypt essentially so <laughs> the bad radiation would be kept here in the Queen's Chamber and steam would be let off here but it's let off and it's vented into the structure of the pyramid with the limestone or whatever it is in fact there is a lot of organic material in here acting as a sort of porous sponge to absorb this and to keep it contained and is that why all the bricks on the surface those rocks are basically locked together airtight to stop nothing getting in Meanwhile, steam from here was allowed to rise to the surface and escape. Or, are these electrical conduits and there'd be wires coming out of here and shooting off across Egypt? So this was, this was, and this can explain the shafts. This was steam which was allowed to go into the pyramid, into the structure, absorbing it like a sponge. Then, of course, they would have had some decontamination problem and they would have actually worked out the thickness required to block radiation from contaminating Egypt and who knows what these people looked like the greys do look funny are they time travelers I don't know what they are what's going on there but they do look like radiation damaged individuals they do have big heads they would have been smart and they are basically modified humans however way you look at them even if they are somehow earth inhabitants King's Chamber, Judgment Hall, precisely engineered granite box. This could have been for storing nuclear fuel. Don't know what that was for. Part of it's been blasted off, possibly when they were trying to open it. Maybe it was sealed in ancient times and the Arabs or whoever, the treasure hunters, dug a hole in it, put some dynamite in there and tried to blow it up. Tried to get in there and hopefully they didn't take those nuclear rods home with them because they wouldn't have liked what happened as a result. And this is Exhibit B in the case I'm trying to make here, this thought experiment, the Mahabharata. And not many people in the West have read this. I picked this up a long time ago and started reading it. It's a huge encyclopedia of ancient information. If you start reading this, it blows your mind. This is all about spaceships, there's one race called the Guardians, they, they seem to be protecting Earth against other people in a spaceship which they blow up, called the Denarvans, they could be demons or something. This is unbelievable. Celestial chariots, uh, super arrows which blow up, celestial chariots, celestial cities, they call spaceships celestial cities, motherships. It says one of them is operating outside the solar system. Either this is science fiction from ancient times, or its memories, 
or it's a combination of memories and science fiction, who knows, but this, these are sacred books to the Hindus and they read this a lot. Here we have essentially what looks like the reactor complex and it's close to the Nile because they would have wanted Nile waters to actually cool down the control rods to cool down the whole system just like at Fukushima built on the coast and here are conduits the Nile would have when it was when it flooded at once a year it would have gone up to here and they would have contained the water somehow inside this complex in addition there are underground lakes under this and more tunnels access tunnels again perfectly straight causeways what's going on here I think these are the headquarters of this is where the scientists lived if these are reactors in particularly the Khufu pyramid and it needed to be some distance away but there were wires running through here and then the wires went further to Egypt and these are hard granite this would have possibly protected them from the radiation should an accident have occurred Again, this is talking about underground tunnels, underground passages. I'm not sure how real this diagram is. I just found this on the internet. These could be running through the Giza Plateau. Again, access tunnels for engineers. This is the Schist Disk 3000 BC. I made a video suggesting that this doesn't fit the tomb it was found. It's already found in the First Dynasty, but it's more complicated than anything else in that tomb. So either it's a plate, and that's for a candle, or this is for one of those vents in the pyramid. This is to turn a... these are handles and this is basically to open up the valves to let steam in and out coated in stone possibly to protect protect the, the metal that... I, I've suggested it's coated in stone. It seems to be stone. If they cut through it, I think there's metal in there uh, to protect it from heat in case the reactor explodes. Again, the pyramids built to precision, built so they would not collapse. Why? Possibly. Radiation. Lower Egypt in the geographical center of the land surface of the world. They put the pyramids in the center of Egypt at Giza. This was possibly because they may not, well, I don't know if they had alternating current, but if they had direct current, direct current, uh, it, it needs to be local. And so if you're, if you're making electricity, it needs to be centralized. These days you can put a power station anywhere and we just keep boosting it thanks to alternating current, but direct current you can't do that because you can't uh, apply the rotating magnetic field in the same way. Now, if it's in the center of the land surface, did, they, did these people populate the entire world, these gingers, these redheads or whoever they were, and they needed to send electricity everywhere, undersea cables, and there was a catastrophe, the civilization collapsed, different civilizations, Peru and Egypt and Tibet, they lost contact, but they kept up the same building techniques, the same, con the same concrete, even if there wasn't transatlantic contact in later times. Was it the same civilization? Again, what are these for? They almost look like cooling towers, don't they? It, it, is this to put the spent nuclear fuel? Again, they need to be inside inside huge buildings to stop the radiation. There are concavities basically to prevent the implosion of these buildings, to stop these walls collapsing, to stop the weight of this pushing the walls outwards. And is that so that the pyramid lasts forever? Or is it to, in the event of an explosion inside the pyramid to to, to stop it collapsing, like what happened to Chernobyl. These people, unlike the Chernobyl people, thought that, okay, we need to make something indestructible to handle these nuclear reactions. Again, you look how straight the conduits are. This is amazing. What's going on here? And actually one author, uh, Pierre Houdin, he wrote a great book about how the pyramid was built. He doesn't talk anything about nuclear or high tech, but he says this was for a counterweight, and that is interesting. Was this for shuttling nuclear material backwards and forwards? Here we have the Grand Gallery, essentially. I think, I think he was the one who suggested this was an elevator shaft. You've got these things here with apparently nothing attached. What's going on there? This might have been sheaved in metal. This could be concrete. 
And this is Fukushima, <coughs> much like what we find in Egypt, because these could be the pyramids, and here we have essentially Egyptian